All right, guys, so we'll continue on with the chapter on the blood vessels. Uh, this is actually a pretty short PowerPoint if you looked ahead at it, but we probably won't get through it. Um, there's a lot of concepts, like a lot of conceptual stuff and ex like examples and analogies and stuff to talk through. But as always, we'll just get as far as we can um, and stop me with any questions because I really want you to understand this stuff when we get through the latter half of the lecture. So we've been talking about blood vessels, okay? And we said that blood vessels can be very broadly broken up into arteries, capillaries, and veins, right? What carries blood away from the heart? Arteries. Then after arteries, we get to our arterioles are the smallest arteries, and then what? Capillaries, right? Capillaries are the smallest vessels that we have that permeate active tissues, and that's where all the exchange happens. Right, that's where things enter and leave the bloodstream is in capillaries because of those tiny little walls. Um, what do we call the cells that line capillaries? <coughs> endothelial cells, right? So we've got the little simple squamous cells, those endothelial cells that line capillaries. They make it really easy for things to diffuse in and out of the bloodstream. Um, what type of capillary makes it even easier for things to go in and out of the bloodstream? Fenestrated. What makes it even easier than that? Sinusoid. Excellent. Sinusoid. Um, good job. So remember, we require those sinusoids in places like the liver, spleen, bone marrow, um, places where we make blood cells, where we monitor blood cells, where we mix plasma proteins, um, because they have those big gaps present between the endothelial cells that really let things come in and out of the bloodstream easily. All right, so we went through arteries, we went through capillaries, and then that brings us to veins. So we'll talk in a little bit more depth about veins. Um, remember that veins collect blood from the capillaries and then they return it to the heart. So whenever the blood is heading back towards the heart, it's doing so in a vein. Um, in general, when we look at veins and compare them to arteries, we saw some kind of key differences between veins and arteries. Um, veins in general have a larger diameter. Okay, we'll see in a little bit that they tend to hold more blood um, than the arteries and capillaries and everything else combined because they have a wide diameter. They're relatively larger vessels. And they also have thinner walls. When we looked at them, remember we saw that they had a, a relatively thin um, tunica media because they had so much less smooth muscle present in their wall. Um, they have a less, less elastic fibers as well, but overall their walls are thinner because they don't need to be as thick and strong. By the time we go through the whole circuit and we get to the veins, we've lost a lot of pressure. So they don't have to have those really strong walls like we see in the arteries. So they have thinner walls. Um, also remember we see that the tunica externa is thicker than the tunica media, okay, which is the opposite in our arteries. Um, and again, we just mentioned this, but the veins have to withstand a lower pressure than the arteries do. Again, you've got your heart and that's where all the force is coming from. So the blood goes out into our arteries under really, really high pressure. And then it goes through all the arteries all the capillaries and then it gets over here to the veins and it's lost a lot of pressure by the time it gets there. So the blood pressure in the veins is not nearly as high as it is in the arteries. Um, another kind of feature that we see present in some of our veins that can distinguish them from other vessels is that we do have one-way valves present. Now this isn't in all of our veins, um, but we do see one-way valves present in some of our veins. Um, primarily, this is going to be in the deep veins of the legs. Okay, so not the superficial, but the deeper veins down in the legs. When we look at these valves, what we see is that we'll have the vein like this. Okay, and then remember the tunica intima is the inner layer, and it'll just form this little like fold that goes in like that. And this side will form a little fold that goes in like that. And that forms a one-way valve. Um, and that controls blood flow. These valves will allow the blood to go up back towards the heart like they're supposed to, but it won't let the blood drop back down backwards. Um, we'll see in a second, we'll look at this in a little bit more detail, but the way that it works is because these vessels are sandwiched in between muscles. So you can imagine when these muscles contract and get wider, they squish the, the vein, right? And they squeeze that blood up past the next valve. Then when the muscles relax, the blood tries to drop down backwards and can't. The muscle contracts again, it pushes the blood up. Tries to go backwards, the valve stops it. Okay, so it's just more and more and more and more. And that's how we help get the blood um, back up our legs. That's why like, you shouldn't sit at a desk all day, right? They say get up and walk around because the more those muscles are working, the more your blood's gonna get pumped back up. 
um, or like when you're pregnant, how when your feet can swell, um, up so much basically to tell you to walk around and that helps with the swelling. Because the more the muscles in your legs are contracting, the more you're gonna utilize these valves and the muscles to keep the blood um, flowing back up towards your heart. Here we see that, and again, it's a pretty simple concept, um, but here you see a deep vein um, in the leg, okay? And every so often, you'll see a one-way valve present. Again, we don't have these in arteries um, or capillaries, we have sphincters and capillaries, not the same thing. Okay, a sphincter is a circular band of muscle. This is a fold of the tunica intima. Very different. Um, and you can see here when the muscle that surrounds the vein contracts, okay, it's, it's expanding in width and that squeezes the vein. The blood gets pushed upwards past this valve. Okay, but the blood cannot drop back down. So if this muscle relaxes and there's nothing pushing forward anymore, the blood cannot go backwards. Okay, and same thing down here. Like as this vein is squeezed, the blood can't get pushed down in the wrong direction because that valve is there. Okay, so it can only go up in the correct direction. And that attempts to help keep the blood from pooling down in the lower lens. Um, because again, we don't have very much pressure there to keep the blood pushing forward and it's gotta fight gravity without very much pressure. Um, so we need some ways to help that happen. These are typically the veins where if you've heard of a DVT or a deep vein thrombosis, that's a clot um, that occurs in these veins. And, and because the blood can tend to pool down here, um, it's a common place for a DVT to occur. All right, so we can break veins up and classify them according to their size, um, kind of like we broke up the arteries into three major categories. So we have venules, medium veins, and large veins. Venules, remember, we said are the smallest little veins that we have, right? So you have your arteries. The smallest arteries are arterioles. That goes to this capillary bed. Then the vessel that collects blood out of the capillary bed is gonna be a tiny little venule. Many venules will meet up and form larger vessels. These larger veins are called our medium-sized veins. Most veins are medium-sized veins. Right? They kind of correlate with the, um, with the muscular arteries. Most of the normal kind of mid-sized veins in your body are gonna be medium-sized veins. Um, when we look at them, again, we mentioned this before, but they have a relatively thin tunica media and a thicker tunica externa. Right? They're not nearly as muscular as the arteries are. So that middle layer where the muscle is, the tunica media is relatively thin. When we look at the tunica externa, we see some collagen fibers and some elastic fibers. The elastic fibers just obviously give elasticity, the collagen fibers just give strength. When we look at large veins, large veins are structured just like the medium-sized veins are. They have a thin tunica media, they've got collagen for strength, they've got elastin for elasticity, they're just bigger. That's it. They're just larger diameter veins. Um, when we look at the large veins, they include things like the superior and inferior vena cava and the branches. Okay, like the first major branches of those vessels. Again, our last really, really big veins that are bringing blood um, into the heart, the veins that are gonna be super close to the heart. So I mentioned that veins have a relatively larger diameter than arteries do. And because of that, they can hold more blood. Right? The bigger the tube, the more blood you can put in it. When we look at our blood, we see that the blood is not evenly distributed through the vessels. Okay, so it's not like we've got a third in arteries, a third in capillaries, and a third of veins. Not the case. Um, we have almost two thirds of our blood in the veins alone. Okay, so most of the blood is actually in our venous system. It's not in the arteries, capillaries, pulmonary circuit. Um, most of it is going to be in the veins. So here you see everything else. Okay, the heart, the arteries, the capillaries, all of the pulmonary vessels only accounts for 30 to 35% of the blood. Again, about two thirds of your blood is gonna be sitting in the venous system, so in the veins. Um, and we see that just over 20% of it is in the really, really bloody organs. We see that we've got large venous networks um, in our liver, in our bone marrow, and then in our skin. 
um, or right underneath the skin in the, in the, the deep dermis area. And these large venous networks, again, hold over 20% of the blood. It's about 21% of the blood. And we'll see that this blood that's present in these really bloody venous networks is called the venous reserve. Again, it's kind of like a, like a reserve volume of blood that we can mobilize and use later if we lose a lot of blood volume. So if there's some sort of an injury where you hemorrhage and lose a lot of your blood, we can mobilize all of this blood and push it all forward through the system so that it can replenish some of that blood that we lost. Here we see the distribution of blood. Um, I would never ask you exact numbers, but know like in general that there's much more in the veins than anything else. Okay, and that we have, um, that the venous reserve is in the venous networks of the liver, skin, and bone marrow. So here, just to kind of give you a, a view of it, this is everything else. This is the blood that's in the veins. This will get a really, really large volume of blood in the veins. And remember, that blood in the veins isn't doing anything, right? Like nothing enters or leaves the blood unless we're looking at a capillary. So the blood that's traveling through the arteries and the blood that's traveling through the veins is just traveling. So it's okay, like if we make those veins smaller and squish some of that blood forward, it's fine. Like we just need the blood to get to the capillaries. That's all we need in order to get nutrients and oxygen and all of that good stuff out of it, okay? The capacitance of a blood vessel describes the relationship between blood volume and blood pressure. When we talk about a vessel that has a high capacitance, we're saying that it can change in volume, it can change in size without a big change in pressure. And when we talk about veins, so in other words, like they're really, it's really easy for them to just get bigger and smaller and they don't need a lot of pressure to stretch them out. When we talk about vessels, we say that veins are capacitance vessels. Don't confuse this with elasticity. It seems kind of confusing, like they're the same thing, but they're not. Elasticity has to do with, with higher pressures. When something's elastic, like the arteries, it takes a lot of pressure to stretch those things out, and then they snap back. That is not capacitance. Capacitance is this really passive kind of like, if I have more volume, I'll get bigger. If I have less volume, I'll get smaller. No worries, whatever. I can be any size, doesn't really matter. Right, that's literally like the face of an image. Um, it doesn't really matter. Okay, that's veins. They're much more passive. Doesn't really matter how big they are. They can get big and small as the volume changes. Not a word. Okay? This is really important because this allows them to accommodate these big changes in blood volume that can occur when a hemorrhage or some sort of an injury occurs where we lose blood volume. Okay, this is what makes them such a good reservoir to hold that venous reserve or to hold that extra blood volume that we might need to mobilize and utilize in case of an emergency. So what happens when we have a large amount of blood loss? So when there's some sort of an injury or hemorrhage and you lose a lot of blood, remember you just need to end up getting your blood to your capillaries, right? That's where you're actually gonna feed your tissues is at the capillaries. So the blood just needs to make it to the capillaries. So when you have a large amount of blood loss, the vasomotor centers, which are in the medulla oblongata, um, which remember is up at the bottom of your brainstem. The vasomotor centers will stimulate sympathetic nerves, and that causes systemic vein constriction. Okay, so I had these really big, lax vessels that had a ton of blood in them, right? And now I tell these veins to shrink up. So now these veins will get this big. All of this excess blood gets pushed forward. Okay, so especially again, those really bloody organs, we said the skin, the bone marrow, the liver, um, we really constrict those veins and we push a lot of that blood forward. Again, the whole point is we wanna get it to the capillaries. That's where we can actually use it. So it just gets pushed completely through the system, right? To the heart, then the arteries, but then the capillaries so that we're able to actually feed our tissues in some way. Um, again, we call that the venous reserve. This like 20 or so percent of blood that's in these really bloody networks. Okay, so 
so that kind of summarizes or finishes up our general discussion of the vessels. Um, the rest of this lecture is going to kind of change gears a bit, and we'll talk a lot about like the movement of blood. So capillary blood flow and pressure and the speed that it flows at and how all of these things can change.